All right, guys, here's the facts. You're gonna see us take a payloader with an Arctic pusher up against concrete that's cemented into a parking lot. They're coming in hot. at top speed today. You're gonna see us going through another parking lot and this parking lot has already been decimated. We have permission to do this and we are trying to destroy the Arctic sectional pusher. Not the parking lot, but you may see both happening today. I'm not gonna give it away. We're doing this because this is part of the process that these guys do every single year when they're putting their new designs to the test. This is what they do and I want to bring this to you guys. You guys are going to see that today. It's, it's going to be epic. So you guys actually look for the worst lots you can just to test these out is that I mean you guys actually have lots that you don't need to plow but you plow so you can beat the crap out of your own plows is that right yeah yeah 100 percent. if we don't already plow it we'll try to plow it so and then every every time you redesign the plow it doesn't go out to guys like me it goes out you have 450 guys out plowing you use it for a full, what, season or two? Or what's the scoop on that? I don't Usually know. Usually it's about two seasons if it's a big change. We'll run the plow, we'll make 50 of them for ourselves to run, and then we make sure that if there's any issues with that change, we can make the adjustment before it goes out to the end user. Okay. Okay, so what is this? Where are we at, Lucas? We're in the back 40 of our maintenance facility. And Bradley, this is Illinois. like this, this graveyard for yeah. all the crap you guys break on your own? Yeah, so this is where we break it and then change it. And then this is where it goes to die, I guess, if you want to call it leaving it out in the pasture. It's all raptors, though. Yeah. So I don't see the sectionals. Yeah, so one of the things, like if you notice this flower right here, um, they suffered a hit on the left and it bent the moldboard. Well, you're not really gonna be able to do anything with it now. It's not worth fixing. The reason there's no sectionals here is because you can take them apart and fix them very easily. Where this, like, you're not gonna be able to straighten this out and for That's the cost dead. of what it's gonna cost to get that moldboard, it, it just doesn't make sense. I had a guy, we bought a brand new snow bucket. It was brand new. I spent 800 bucks. It was my pride and joy, man. I saved my money up for this snow bucket. This was years ago. Gave it to my operator. He came back 30 minutes later in a U-shape. No. 30 minutes. He destroyed my snow bucket. It looked like this, except it just went He ran it into one curb, and it was gone. It was just like, it's not repairable, Yeah. and it's just destroyed. Yeah, these are definitely a, a price point unit, but again, they suffer the same weaknesses that other normal pushers on the market do and we make ours so it is flexible to get up and over obstacles in a sense. I use that word flexible loosely, but if you do hit something you can't get over or you bend a wing, you bend a moldboard, it's just unbolt it and throw a new one on and you're still able to get through that storm as well, so. This is the graveyard. And a lot like this, for example, we have permission from the property owner not, you know, that we could do this. This isn't a normal plowing situation. We're here to test the abuse and, you know, abuse the plow is really what we're looking for because we know that a customer may not use it correctly. So we're always designing for it to get abused, not just used correctly. All right, one of the things that we've been running into a lot with our customers is aftermarket blocks. And what they are is they're cheap aftermarket blocks made out of materials that are made for other things and that's what makes them so cheap so when you guys are buying your blocks you want to look for our logo and part number on the block it's very important because otherwise you're not getting sold our block and you're not going to be satisfied with the way your pusher works and unfortunately um, it's something that is out there but what you can take from this is that look for our logo on the block and then it will work the way it should and it won't break all right, so one of the things this year that is new, guys, is we made these thicker poly blocks for the bottom row only. We made them for guys that have larger machines that can really manhandle a pusher. 
And what we also made them for is guys that have have just had issues with brakes. And so the, these thicker poly blocks that are made for only the bottom row will solve those issues immensely. Now, when you go to swap them out, Lucas, mm -hmm. can you use the existing poly blocks on the top? So if a guy wanted to retrofit an older blade, he wouldn't have to throw any poly blocks out. No. He could just put thicker ones on the bottom yep. and then reuse the bottom ones on the top if there ever is a wear issue down the road. Yeah, so what you would do is if you say you broke a poly block on this mill board, you would just take the broke one off, you take the good one off, you put new poly blocks on the bottom if you want to go to the thicker ones, and you take that thinner one and you keep it for the top. Okay, so what are we doing here, Jeff? So we're going to back the loader up, we set in blocks into the concrete here and anchor them in. We're going to back it up and we're actually going to come at it we're going to hit each one of those blocks and so out here you're going to see these two inside panels to go up and over those blocks so you're going to see that trip edge go back and forth as well as the section raise up and down so when you guys are actually testing this do you uh, do you actually just do it once or how do you do that about 250 300 times until something gives up is what we do there so most <laughs> definitely there's no no just taking it easy on it and that's what we're out there to do right so. yes i'm riding what is this this is not considered shot what is this not considered shotgun uh ag, ag? i think that's the ag seat the farmer seat right there <laughs> I just, uh, I don't think uh, Case has gotten around to putting a passenger seat in their wheel loaders like if they it was do on the a harvesters. If it was on a motorcycle, what is that called? I forgot. All right, you guys in the comments down below, you know what I'm talking about. The back seat, I don't know what you call it, but yes, that's where I am. Where are we going? <laughs> are we going to hit them things? Let's go hit them things. You want to go hit the things? Yeah, let's go hit the things. I want to okay. see how bad it is inside the cab. So one of the things when we're... Um, Crap, I bet he's gonna get a run at it. This is gonna be nuts. Oh yeah, you know, that's a good point. We should oh, get a run at it. Oh, no, he's gonna get a run at it. This is all right. Well you better hold on. I'm hanging uh, on, dude. I don't take my foot out of it. That's the number one rule here at R and D land. You can't take your foot out of it. They're coming in hot. It's just navigating the loader through the parking lot full of cars and potholes is pretty much a hard part. That was crazy. Maybe we should like, just do like a normal scenario, like we're not tearing through a lot. Yeah, let's just do a normal one. Yeah, where all right, so let's do one more normal. Here's you might accidentally hit something, you guys. Here's here's what it's gonna be like. Not the 20 miles an hour wound up from a block away. Another, so, I mean, I don't need to say it, but I'm getting a guess. If you guys, some of you guys may have experienced it where if you hit something like that in a different pusher, you're going to eat that steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Your head's going to go into that windshield, or you're going to taste that steering wheel. More than likely, you're going to hit, hit that steering wheel. It's not hitting, Nick. What's the story with this parking lot we're going so to next, we you guys? We may or may not use a parking lot to do pothole testing with a lot of down pressure to make sure that if someone were to use the plow the wrong way, it would survive. So one of the things you guys, we, you don't use down, you're not supposed to use down pressure with these plows. Well, you can use just a minimal amount. And then if you guys have to like cut hard pack or ice, then you can roll the machine's coupler forward and it, uh, bends the poly block and adds weight to your cutting edges. Otherwise, you're looking for the pusher to float. That way you can get maximum traction to the tires so that you can 
use the power of the machine to pushing instead of grinding the plow into the ground. What he's trying to say is if you're plowing virgin snow that just fell fresh, you just need to set the plow down on the ground. The frame should be relatively parallel with the ground flat. This is rolled forward, so you'd be like, if you came back for a cleanup, and you had to scrape snow that froze to the, the surface. This like is the flush. aggressive. Yeah, you okay. just roll it forward and it adds a lot of weight to your cutting edges. All right, well, let's go check out the parking lot from Heck. So what's the deal with this parking lot we're going to? It's one of the worst parking lots you've ever seen in your damn life. And you guys it's use this for testing? potholes in it that you're gonna lose little cars in and things like that, so that's why it's the best to test with. Beat the living hell out of it. Is it on right now, Lucas? Can you see that okay? started to become clear now I've used Arctic pushers for about two years and it's got it's given us basically the best scrape over the lot of anything we've ever used and it's cut back on our salt usage dramatically but it wasn't until I saw that pusher flexing as it goes around that corner that's an eight and a half inch drop it went around with no problems still staying connected to the pavement below that's when I literally had the aha moment while filming this video that that's the difference. This is a 16 foot pusher contouring to the ground over an eight and a half inch drop. All right, you guys, well, that's our video for today. What an awesome video. Um, the Arctic obviously beat me because I'm done. That's our video for today. God bless. Go get him, you guys. We keep going. <laughs> hey, if you guys want more information, go over to Lucas's channel. Where, do they, where would they go on YouTube, Lucas? Arctic Snow Products. All right, and on Instagram, where are you guys? Uh, Arctic Snow and Ice Products. Arctic Snow and Ice Products. And if you guys are just tuning in, we've got more coming at you because we're actually gonna go inside the factory next and we're gonna see how they build these things, what they're doing, and you're gonna see the entire process from bare metal to going out the door in under an hour. They build these things one per hour and it started out as a two week process. Yep. And we're gonna see exactly how they do it. It's literally one of the most interesting manufacturing processes that I have ever had a chance to see. It's amazing. And that video is coming out right down the pipeline. And that's all we got for you today. God bless and go get them you guys. And we will see you on the next one. And I'm gonna take a break. Check you next time guys.